Greetings, it's the Digital Dog with Lightroom 4. I've got a little video that I wanted to show on one of the most anticipated, requested, exciting features, which is soft proofing. Yes, as you can see down here in the develop module, we now have the ability to soft proof in Lightroom 4. And I want to show some of the newer features in soft proofing that I think make Lightroom 4 an even better place to print and soft proof than even good old Photoshop and I'll show you why. So first off, as you can see, I can come down here and I can click on the soft proof button or simply type the S key which will invoke soft proofing. Notice as I turn the S key soft proofing on and off, we see the histogram change and update based on the profile that has been previously selected and this pane underneath the histogram expands for more options. So right now I have a ICC profile loaded for my Epson 3880 for exhibition fiber paper and I can toggle between a relative or perceptual intent and I think you can see it's subtle but the image on screen changes slightly as the profile updates. Another really useful feature in the soft proofing in Lightroom that we don't see in Photoshop is that as we change these profiles or as we change the rendering intent, the histogram updates. So you're actually seeing the histogram based on the soft proof profile you've loaded. Notice I can come here and I can select a different profile, an Epson profile for 4900. The soft proof on screen updates as does the histogram. So that's very useful. Let's toggle back to the Epson 3080 profile. The other interesting new feature with soft proofing is that as I move my cursor over the image, if you notice under the histogram, we now have RGB numbers that represent the values of these pixels in the output color space. And these RGB numbers are now in the uh, beloved by many 0 to 255 scale rather than the original 0 to 100 uh, percent values that most people agonize over when they for first start using Lightroom. So that's very exciting because now what you can literally do is instead of loading an ICC profile for a printer, let's say you know you're going to go out to sRGB for the web, you can select sRGB. The histogram now updates quite dramatically showing you what this image in its current rendering would look like in terms of its histogram and as I move my cursor over the image I'm getting RGB values represented by sRGB so that's very very useful and new and I think um, a lot of people may want to select a particular RGB working space and soft proof if they know they're going to be going out for example to the web but let's get back to soft proofing for an output device we'll go back to our Epson 3880 and you'll notice that we have here the simulate paper and ink, what was known in Photoshop as the make my image look like crap button, simply because what happens is the white of the paper and the black of the ink is simulated, not the blackest black of your display and the whitest white of your display. If we turn this on and off, you can see that the image does change but it toggles in in such a way that it's not super dramatic like we have in Photoshop. This darker user interface is also very helpful in not giving you that alarming change. The other thing that I think is very very useful is as we turn the soft proof on and off you'll notice that behind the image or around the image our gray background which is what we normally see when soft proofing is off changes and as I turn on this checkbox I'll hit the S key notice how it gradually seems to fade in. It's not as dramatic as we see in Photoshop. So I'm going to hit the S key. And do you notice how as I toggle on and off, it sort of fades in, the background sort of changes, and the soft proof turns on. And this, I think, is very useful because unlike Photoshop, this gradual sort of blending of the soft proof isn't as alarming to your eye, and the image just doesn't look as dreadful when you have your soft proof turning on and off as you see in Photoshop. Uh, another really terrific feature is that we can now soft proof and apply edits based specifically on the soft proof. You'll notice here it says create proof copy. 
if I press this button or if I start to do any editing of any of the controls in the develop module, Lightroom will ask me, do I want to make a virtual copy? And the idea here is that, well, we're looking at the image now through our SoftProof profile, and we're going to be editing specifically based on what we see. So what Lightroom is going to do that's very, very useful is it's going to create a virtual copy. So instead of clicking on this button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to say, well, I want my simulate paper on because I want to see how this image is really going to look. And now what I want to do is it looks a little flat in comparison because of the contrast ratio of this paper. Maybe what I want to do is change the contrast a little. And as I start to click and drag on this, I get this warning or this set of options. Do you want to create a soft proof virtual copy? Well, I do. And of course, I can turn this checkbox off so it does it automatically. I want to create a soft proof virtual copy because I'm going to edit this image based on the soft proof. I want the original to be left alone. So now I can come in here and I can adjust my highlights or my shadows or maybe give it a little more clarity or do whatever I want to do based on how this image will soft proof to this paper. And then when I go to my print module, that soft proof and edit and virtual copy will now be carried over and I can make my print and the original file is left untouched. So this is really terrific because now what I can do is I can make any number of virtual copies based on a particular paper profile, based on a particular rendering intent, edit to my heart's content, and then make a virtual copy. And there's no disk space being used in terms of taking up another iteration of this particular image. This may be a 50 megabyte raw file. If I make a virtual copy, I'm not going to make another 50 megabyte iteration. I'm simply going to make textural, textural information that says this is a virtual copy stored in the library and don't take up any more space. And I can save these in, in uh, if I go back to the uh, library mode, you can see now I have my original and I have my virtual copy. And you'll notice here it does show me what profile was used for making that virtual copy. So let's go back and develop. I'll show you a couple more things that are pretty exciting. You'll notice at the top of the histogram there are two little overlay buttons. If you click here, it shows you what colors are out of gamut in this particular image with this soft proof based on my monitor. So Lightroom knows about my monitor profile. Obviously it, it has to have a monitor profile in order for it to show us the image correctly on screen. And since it knows about the monitor profile and the gamut of the monitor, and it also knows about the output profile I've selected, it can show me which colors on screen are out of gamut for this particular display. This is very useful because generally speaking, we're working with a very wide gamut file when we're editing images. Let's go, for example, to Profoto RGB. If I click here, what basically is being shown is that these colors are out of gamut for this monitor. Um, I can turn this off and then what I can do is see what colors are out of gamut for the output. So let's go back to our Epson 3880, click here, and I don't know if you can see, it's very subtle, there are some little red colors here that are showing me that these are out of gamut for this particular uh, color space for my Epson. Now this seems to be a bug. Hopefully this will get fixed in the beta. If I zoom in, the red dots don't correctly match the zoom out. There's a bit of a disconnect here. But again, it is useful. Let's pick a really big, or actually let's do the opposite. Let's pick a small color space like sRGB. And now you can see with this destination overlay on, if we were to convert to sRGB, these colors are the colors that are going to clip when I convert to sRGB. So that's very, very useful. Seeing either the gamut warning here for colors that are out of gamut for the display or colors that are out of gamut for a particular color space. So if you're working in Profoto RGB, it's actually Melissa RGB, which is a variant in Lightroom, and you want to see, well, if I go to the web, how much of this out of gamut color will, will shift, be clipped, so to speak, because I'm going from a large color space to a small color space, I just toggle over here and you can see a lot of that green color is out of gamut for sRGB, which sort of makes sense. If I were to pick um, 
color match RGB. It's not much bigger, a little bit bigger. And let's go to, um, well, let's pick Adobe RGB. Let's go here. And less clipping going from the raw file to a larger, or actually a smaller color space, in this case Adobe. And then going out to my Epson, not too bad. Just a few colors are clipping here. So those are some of the quick and dirty advantages to the soft proofing in Lightroom. Uh, you can also do a before and after view, of course, as you are editing your image. If you if you want to compare the before and after as you're moving your sliders, you can try to make the uh, virtual copy look a little closer to the before image with the soft proof off. But there's a lot of really terrific features here in terms of being able to see on screen a better representation of what your image will look like. I think a lot of people will like the fact that they can now go in here and pick any number of RGB spaces. We can go into this dialog box. I wish I didn't have to expand it every single time. It doesn't stay sticky. But for example, if I want to see any of the RGB working spaces or output spaces I have loaded, I simply click on them and they'll show up. And I can now select them here. Or as I said before, you can pick a out, uh, working space like sRGB, Adobe RGB, Profoto and see the actual RGB numbers on screen, which is very useful, and of course, how those uh, profiles will affect the histogram. In the past, we were always working with Melissa RGB. The histogram was always Melissa RGB. No matter what you were doing, this is what you saw. These were the numbers that you were looking at. You'd have to export the file, render it to whatever color space you wanted, opened it in Photoshop, and only then could you see these numbers and histogram match what you had in Lightroom. Now with soft proofing, you don't have that limitation anymore. So that's kind of a quick 30,000 foot overview on soft proofing in Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.